hits like Coca-Cola, Levi Strauss, Johnny Carson and Mickey Mouse. The first star was James Dean. Elvis Presley and he's still the king. Some things are only imitatable. You can't be that original. Hey there, friends and foes. Welcome to Back of the Cereal Box, the pop culture podcast that celebrates the fun of the Saturdays of our youth. And sitting alongside me, the prophet of pop culture, John Pike, you can call me Johnny, is the smartest man on the planet, Dave Mattingly. And next to him is a monkey who talks, <laughs> Hillbilly. Of Three Ravens Publishing. I mean, is that, in, that talks. Is that inaccurate? I love you too, John. Is that inaccurate? Together we are Maybe. the Three Amigos. Oh, wait, that's the Macarena. Oh, yeah. Um, anyway. God, I don't remember that. I remember the movie, but I don't remember the... the, the uh, neither do I, yeah. The, the, well, it was, it was, it was similar, similar to Macarena. Dun, dun, yeah. Dun, 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 dun. Yeah. 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 yeah, we have to try your head and cough. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Oh my gosh, that's hysterical. I haven't seen God, that I haven't since. seen that in forever. Yeah. yeah. Now I need to go watch it. Off watches. <laughs> <laughs> they need to make another one. All three of them are still alive. They need to need to do one more episode of that movie. Well, on their uh, uh, Steve Martin and Martin Sharp uh, tour uh, from a few years ago, they, they did a couple of scenes from that. Oh, did they? Yeah. They were in Chattanooga at one point. I, mm. I didn't get to go see them. The ticket sold out. Well, mm. so if you love that that. Rhythmic comedy that well, Steve I was just Martin did. Call it the Martinizing Tour. Come on, oh, it's that's right funny. there. That you would know, be okay. funny. Uh, but if you like that rhythmic comedy that Steve Martin and Mart or Steve Martin and Martin Short mm-hmm. do together, um, only Murders in the Building was a great series mm-hmm. on Hulu. Yeah, check it out. Have you seen it? You no. haven't seen it. Anyway, we are here this morning to talk about the fun of the Saturdays of our youth. And we are all of a generation that Saturday mornings meant big bowls of cereal, sitting down and watching cartoons, reading comic books, watching kaiju movies. And because we didn't have smartphones at the breakfast table or tablets on Saturday morning. (laughs) <laughs> we were literally reading the back of the cereal box that was our our newspaper, that was our world, that was our portal into pop culture, because you guys can probably remember some of the things that I do, like not only reaching into the box for the toy, yep. but on the back of the cereal box, you would have puzzles and games and comics and on on mazes mazes and and that magical time when they printed a record a record Ooh, cut it out of the cereal box <laughs> yeah. and play that baby yeah, yeah. yeah. Did, did you ever have one of yeah those? i remember those yeah Ooh, sugar <clears throat> yep the Archies. honey honey yeah it seems like a sugar crisp had those more often than the other cereals well it made sense though yeah probably yeah you're probably right i had the jackson that's five what, post? That's, yeah, yeah. it's post okay. cereal so yeah. they got some kind of licensing deal with a specific Music record company, label, yeah, record label. Yeah, yeah. But this morning, we don't have cereal boxes, but we do have cereal pop. And I put a different flavor in front of each of us. Now, you don't have to go with the flavor in front oh, of you. Oh, popcorn. You are welcome yeah. to trade, but we are going to do a live taste testing of cereal pop here on the show just for you. All right, so I've got cookie pop. This is uh, Chips Ahoy cookie. Dave's got well, the yeah, fruity got pebbles. pebbles. And... Hillbilly's got cocoa pebbles, and we are going to uh, pop these open. Yeah. Uh, for the one that's not full of chocolate. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. We, yeah, and so the one that is full of chocolate may have melted just a little bit <laughs> on the three hour drive mm-hmm. from Nashville to Louisville. And the problem is, it's with chocolate. No AC. Yeah. But now, now I've had the cocoa puffs popcorn, which is similar, I assume, to that. And it was you know, powder kind of sprinkled on. But this actually has little bitty pebbles yeah. stuck onto it, which is interesting. And I think That's the same thing with the Cocoa Pops, right? Mm. Cocoa Pops. True. Mm. Yep. A little built in. Yeah. Like chocolate chips on your popcorn. So, I don't know that I'm a fan of chocolate popcorn. I don't know either. Ooh. Yeah. 
No, it's caramel popcorn. That's the do, one I go like for that? if I go for a flavor. You like one. the? Th this is pepper? pretty good. Yeah. Well, okay. So it's, it's like a skittle in vegetable form. Think, think about <laughs> think, think, think about the big form, big buckets of, of Boy Scout popcorn you get. Mm -hmm. You got you got mm -hmm. the caramel corn. You got the cheese corn. You know, you got all these different things. And yeah, that's the the quality of the popcorn itself. Mm -hmm. It just kind of melts in your mouth. It's really good yep. popcorn with a chunk of chocolate stuck to the side of it. So it's okay, cool. It's a chunk of chocolate. That one, same kind of thing. It's a, it's a chunk of fruity flavor. Mm -hmm. See that one? Is that that's basically like this other one, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Oh wow! It, yeah, that's yeah. Wow, yeah. that is a clump. See yep. the clump of chocolate. I'm not going to argue. Fat boy likes chocolate. So it's actually a cookie. Mm -hmm. <laughs> You're eating an entire cookie worth mm -hmm. there. So you like you like the uh, chips ahoy better than the cocoa. Here, let me try the cocoa pepper. I like them all. I like the chocolate better than I like the fruity one. But. Yeah. Does anybody else want to come sample some uh, cereal pop or cookie pop? These um, were sent to us by uh, Vintage Italia, the marketing firm, to nice. uh, specifically try on air. And uh, Very cool. I will tell you. We will share with the audience, and we, we've dipped our hands in all of the bags. So, no, so it's got it extra out. flavor. Yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> Um, I'm glad you didn't have bowls with milk set up to put. <laughs> Even yeah. though you know we we try all these different cereals, I, I have expected to have a bowl with milk to so, put this in. So I have a confession to make. I have bowls. Oh I have God! Spoons. Oh dear God! I forgot the cereal at home. Mm. I had. I have already tried the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles <laughs> Mutant Mayhem cereal. There's a new one. Yeah, but I thought it would be fun to bring it and let you guys try it, let our audience try it. Did it taste like ooze? It's not good. Hmm. That's why it would be fun to let you guys... That, well, the original Mutant Ninja cereal wasn't very good either. I never had the original. I did. Right, yeah. right after it came out, we ended up getting a box of it, and it was just like... It's kind of like knockoff Fruit Loops is kind of what it tasted like. Really? So those hmm. specialty cereals are never very good. No. Yeah. No. And it, it was like a one-off, and you never really saw it again. It came out for a little time, and it was gone. All right, so my final verdict on the cereal pop and the cookie pop is it's, it's, a, it's a good attempt. And for somebody who loves this kind of thing, they're going to love it. Well, I'm, I don't know that yeah. I'm a fan, though. I, I like traditional pop. I like caramel corn. I like cheddar cheese corn. Yeah. And I like traditional popcorn. Okay, so that's about the extent. I've never gone for kettle corn. By oh, the, I love kettle corn. I, I all right, like so that. Your, 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 your issue with it being in the car for so long. All right, so these are all melted on. All right, so that's mm -hmm. not an issue. That's already part of what this is. Yes. Mm -hmm. And I was like, okay, well, is it just supposed to be like chocolate chips mixed in with the popcorn? You grab a handful of everything. No, no, no. It's it was all. It looks exactly like it's supposed to look but according to this the, ain't bad. Oh, so I mean, supposed, to, uh, supposed to be in. It's clumps. supposed to be it's not because melted they melted in, in real. Okay, right. Yeah, that, that's why I was like, okay. Well, that and one I, looks I, like look, that, and that looks like I, that. I have a confession to make. I had to break them up in the bag <laughs> after being in the car with no AC for three hours. It was one popcorn ball. Yes. So, anyway. Thank you, Vintage Italia. I, I like it. I, I think for somebody who likes this kind of thing, they would love it. So uh, there you go. There you have it. I don't eat a lot of popcorn, but I do like this. Yeah? I don't know if I would go out and, and buy it because I, I assume the uh, the marketing and the extra stuff is going to be, you know, 3 $4 a bag maybe. I, yeah, I don't yeah. know what At it is. At least. I mean, that's that's probably more like 5 4 to $6. No, no, it, it is. It, yeah. it is about three. I think it's three sixty-six. Okay, okay. Yeah. So and, uh, but, but if I'm gonna have popcorn at home, uh, like two, three times a year, it's usually just the the microwave store brand cheap stuff. You know. Well, and I'm I'm a I'm a popcorn at the movies only kind of guy. Mm. That's the only time I eat popcorn is when I go to the movies. I when never we, eat popcorn. When we at make movies. popcorn for movie night at the house, you know, I'll do the old mill style. Either we'll we'll toss just you know heavy butter, cheese buttered um, or, or uh, salt pepper maybe some garlic powder or I'll throw in like chili powder or do the Italian seasoning thing you know just, just depending on what I'm wanting to go with oh yeah we, we mix it up you know we used to we had the popcorn machine in the break room and mm -hmm. we lived on popcorn and coffee half the time because that's all we had time to eat so whoever was running the, the snacko would make all these different flavors of popcorn and they'd put this in they'd do that and we'd do the mm -hmm. Tex-Mex one or you know they just mix it up yeah, and it made it interesting. You know, putting Old Bay into your popcorn mix and just shake it around. I I can I can dig that. Yeah. So you get the different flavors. Yeah. Um, and it's not the same thing all the time. 
Now I could see some like a coffee mocha flavor going pretty nice. That ooh, mm. coffee mocha, mocha flavor. That, hey, ooh. yeah, y'all. That I you might go first. after. Yeah. But I, I'm like that you, is now I, trademarked I, by John Pike Productions. Something like only this. to be used with permission. Something like this. I'd, I'd, I'd go back to the that. old Boy Scout style popcorn. Where yeah, I'm going after the caramel corn. I'm going after the cracker jacks. But that's also mm. Cracker Jacks. You know? Yeah. Another yeah. thing that we had back in the day that you dig inside, get your toy and everything. And if- So Cracker Jack toys. By the time I was of age where I was pulling the prize out of the Cracker Jack box, it was like rub on tattoos and yeah. mini yeah. comics. It, it was the, you know, the two cent toy. Nothing actually right. worth uh, doing anything with for the most part. But it was a thrill. We, I was thrilled to get that as I a wanted child. the tattoos. Yeah. Now there's nothing here. There's a scan code that you can go download something <laughs> or look at something. It's like, the hell is this? Where's the toy? I want the tattoo, man. We, we went to a, a local play and they had Cracker Jack boxes. I'm like, hell yes. Mm-hmm. Cracker Jacks, they're mine. I get, I'm like, I'm, I'm sitting there. I'm digging in there. <laughs> Where the frick? So, there's no prize. It's a scan code. Yeah. And working in cybersecurity, when I see the QR, that means a free virus here with every purchase. So I, <laughs> I don't do QRs. Now, now here's here's my question though about um, cereal box prizes. When we when you were a kid, what cereal, in your opinion, had the best prizes ever? The best toys. Um, Feel free to chime in, audience. Yeah. If you, uh, I'm too young. you, you are too young. Mm. Well, I mean, don't remember who had it, but the the toy I always liked getting, and this would be like every four or five years ago, was the uh, the, the Walker toys. Has a the wind it up, has yeah. the feet. Uh, no, not even wind up. It has like a a bobber and a string, and it walks to the end. Oh, oh okay. really? Yeah. I don't remember those. Those were always pretty cool. I, I remember seeing those before. We got more of the knockoff generic. Um, okay. The big bags of rice crispy. Yeah, the malto meal. Yeah, the malto yeah. meal yeah. stuff is what we. But you know, that's just we bought in bulk. So to get Fruit Loops or Fruity Pebbles or something like that was one of those rare treats. Um, I only eat in bulk. <laughs> um, I, I I always love getting the tattoos, but you know, I I, I like I kind of like my ink. You know, it's just one of those things. Yeah. Um, other than that, I mean, the, yeah, the, the, the tattoos determine your course of your life. <laughs> the the uh, the puzzles and stuff, the little puzzle books that you could get. Because I yeah. remember, I want to say it was maybe in the the chocolate pebbles or the fruity pebbles, and they had these little puzzle books before. Yeah. That you 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 know, it's like crossword puzzles. So, mm-hmm. fruity and cocoa pebbles always had great toys, um, great Flintstones toys. At one point, they actually had the models of the cars that you could put together. Um, one of my favorite I don't prizes. That one. Yeah, yeah. Um, one of my favorite prizes from the Pub Pebble cereal, cereals were um, the Fred and Barney coin squeeze coin oh, yeah. purses. They had those. their heads, yep. but the back had a slot. Oh wait, you, okay, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I man, I carried the Fred until it fell apart. In, into college, I carried it. <laughs> um, but um, I remember, oh, uh, but when I was in college. Uh, uh, Captain Crunch uh, did the "Where's the Captain" campaign, yes. and, and uh, they had you know a, an outline of him on the boxes that was nothing there and a big question mark. And I, I got a shirt of "Where's the Captain" that I wore for a long time in college, just from sending in some box tops. That's I fantastic. Got the uh, the secret decoder uh, used to always be in there. That was fun. Well, some, uh, so Captain Crunch was the other one that had the best toys. They had the race cars and the diving submarine and uh, oh, awesome. Wait, awesome. wait, the, the diving submarine. I remember that one. That, that um, With the baking soda. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember that one. I remember seeing the commercials for that. I never got it. I never, I never got, never got, got to have that one. I, I wanted did. it. You did? You uh, got it, it to work? It would work uh, like three times, maybe. Dive. You know, Dive, come up a little bit, yeah. and then dive. It would never all the way up. Okay. All right, all right. You know that whole, we bought in bulk and it was cheap. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I got to see a lot of those commercials that I never got the toys <laughs> that I wanted. Which is like, we never had the action figures. Well, so so when, when as I got a little bit older, they started doing mail-away action figures. And mm-hmm. uh, I don't remember what cereal it was, but I sent away the box, the receipt from the box tops. And I think it was six. 
and I got the pre-release for free Superpowers Flash figure. And I still have it in the little mailer box. Oh, nice. And I want to say... Now, is that the like Kenner action figure size? Yeah. Or the, the bigger... No, it was the Kenner. Okay. It was so the like three the, the three Star quarter Wars inch. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. From the original Superpowers line. Wow. Yeah. It was That's fantastic. But anyway, I thought we'd do something really fun to get to know our co-hosts. Before we dive into our main topic, our main topic this morning is going to be kaiju and godzilla but we've got an hour and a half to fill so well i have a panel at 10 15 so i will have to bolt out early no you're going to be here until he says you can leave so i have put in front of you see how i just casually ignored that yeah. comment um anyway i put in front of you uh two cards from <laughs> from a game called it's kind of a fun story now don't look at them yet you're going to pick up one by random and you are going to answer the prompt on that card. We're only going to do one per host, but this could be fun, this could be epic, or an epic disaster. Who wants to go first, since you have to bolt? Hillbilly, go. All right. What does everyone like that you can't stand, and why do you hate it? Oh, do we How have long enough do you time have? for this? Yeah. Wait, do you want me to go down the curmudgeon path, or... Okay. or? We want this alphabetically, or how you... what does everyone like that you can't stand? Um, I don't know. Boba, yeah. Boba, Boba tea, Boba Fett, or Boba tea, Boba tea. Right. Bo Boba tea. I mean, it's just like what? What's the big point? Okay, it wow. tastes like soap, doesn't it? I the 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 nodules, the tapioca, whatever those. It's <laughs> the like, pearls. Yeah, it's like what the hell is this crap? It, it just the, the texture thing. Are you a Boba fan? She loves it. I'm asking you guys to give me some after lunch. <laughs> I know. I, I, can't, I can't stand it. I don't understand what the big deal is with well, it. Well, he's not going to get you an after lunch. He's not so, going anywhere so near So I'm it. with you on this. Oh, I'll my, get her whatever she wants, but... I know. My, my daughter loves Boba tea, and, and I tried it, and I thought it tastes like detergent. It was awful. It was the worst thing I've ever tasted. I think it's fine, but well, <laughs> tied fines, I mean, yeah. Okay, we want to go down another tangent. Uh, Starbucks. I don't like five bucks unless I have no other choice. The coffee is generally <clears throat> bleh. I can make just as good or better at the house. And it costs expensive prices wherever you go. It's five buck a cup of large coffee. All right, yep. yep. But you get no. to hang out with other people who spend a bunch of money on coffee. You know. and, and, you know, network with hipsters. Yeah, and their Apple and that benefit iPod, is what or their Apple laptops. Where, where's the benefit there? And write your cool novel. Yes, I actually, I'll I, have my half skinny mocha latte. I actually want to be productive. Grande. No, just talk about it. <laughs> well, well, you you pitch soy milk, up to please. People? Anyway, all right, Dave. Uh, what social fad did you fall deepest into? <laughs> oh. Depends what you consider a fad. Uh, I mean. If I stay with a lifetime, it's not a fad, right? So that, that's true. Yeah. Well, it's not a fad for you, right? But it may be a fad for everybody else, and everybody else is just looking at you, going, "Oh, you sad, pathetic little man." Uh, uh we'll, we'll go with uh, when I was uh, on the uh, airs at EJ. I was known as New Wave Dave, and I still listen to New Wave all the time. I founded the fan club for Men Without Hats, the Safety Dance people. You know. But new, speaking of which, New Wave isn't a fad. It's still, dude. I put on synth well, wave musically, or, you know. I put on it may or may not all be. The time I don't know because I can just zone out to it. You know, no lyrics, no nothing like that. Just straight up synth wave, dark wave, yeah. you know, new wave, just for the the vibe of the music, and it gets me into because, a writing mood. Because we were teenagers ish when that was a thing. Yeah. Uh, anybody uh, nowadays? Are they? They're probably not going to get into it. Most likely not, unless yeah. they're on the '80s kick. Yeah. So it. A fan, or at least a, a kind of a, a time boxed moment, you know, that, that is a part of who I am. Dear God, don't let him bring back hammer pants. We don't need that again. We desperately need that. No, again. we don't. What is wrong with you, John? Can't touch that. All right. <laughs> that was horrible. All right, here we go for Johnny. <laughs> what story from your life comes to mind when you hear fire? And by the way, I picked each one of these knowing that these would be funny for each of us. So um, when I hear the word fire, I was maybe nine years old, 
And my little brother and I were out in the backyard where the burn pile was. And we got logs from the wood pile and we put them into the burn pile and then we went into the shed and we got all the gasoline. Pour it on, strike the match, whoo, fire, and it would burn up real quick. And we did this over and over. There went the entire backyard. Yeah. All right. Well, so, so we, we weren't getting a big enough fire. It wasn't last time. So we poured all the gasoline on the wood. And I strike the match, and I drop the match. And this is happening in slow motion. I look up, and my dad is pulling into the driveway as that match is falling. And I'm like, no! I mean, this is literally happening like it happens in the movies. And that fire went up 20 feet. How far back did you fly? Well, we, I, I don't remember that I, because I was already running oh, okay. away from dad. My dad was a, a former Olympic athlete. So my so brother and I... a good head start. Yeah, my brother and I, we took off. He caught my brother first, the little one first. And I heard him screaming bloody murder. I thought he had died. <laughs> I ran around the back of the other car in the driveway and I thought I was being smart by keeping the car between me and my dad so we're doing this thing right mm-hmm. around the car that just pissed him off even more probably <laughs> keep in mind my father was an Olympic athlete he put one hand on the roof of the car and vaulted over the car <laughs> And as he came over the car, he undid his belt and, <laughs> and like Indiana dad, just started laying into me. And I don't remember anything else that happened that day. And I never played with fire again. It's a shame that fault spanking is no longer an Olympic sport. <laughs> oh, see, this is why he's here, folks. Vault smacking. I love that. That, that should be an Olympic Rule sport. Rule 34. Yeah. <laughs> Oh uh, a, a guy used to he was a, <laughs> a big pyro uh, as a kid. Yeah. And that uh, uh, he had been accused of setting the neighbor's house on fire. But he says, no, that's not true. Uh, he set his brother on fire and sent him to the neighbor's house. <laughs> that sounds about right. My, my, my little brother, who also engaged in this activity with me, he, he did not get it as bad as I did, even though he sounded like it from the other side of the house. Um, you know, he was the baby, and, you know, mama don't let dad, you know, beat the baby. Um, you know, that doesn't happen in today with today's youth, does it? No. You know, they, kids don't get beatings like we did when we no. were kids. That's why but they don't get prizes in the cereal either. That's, yeah, right, that's I, right. I see a Hot Wheels track, and I still twitch. Yeah, yeah okay. okay. <laughs> well, my brother did not learn the lesson. He burned down a neighbor's boat. Oh, no. And that fire... A spark jumped out of the boat and did not hit their house, but hit the field, the wheat field behind the boat, burned the entire field down. Oh, God. Yep. Yeah. That's not good. No, it was not good. So, anyway, little fun diversion, little side quest this morning. Well, if it was a cornfield, he could have made his own popcorn. Yes, he could have, yeah. Well, there was a cornfield right next to mm. it, but it was separated by a grove of trees. Yeah, and if well, you got a fire gap, your, yeah. your, your, yeah, your crops, a fire you know. Yeah. Now, that was, that was interesting. Did, you, did anyone else ever do this when they were kids? The local farm, you know, the corn farm, you, you like, knocked down the corn stalks to make a maze and built a fort in the middle of it. Anyone else ever do that? You can't do that today with drones and farmers with their drones. They'll catch no, that'd it. Get, that'd get you shot. Yeah. Rock yeah. salt sucks. I've been shot with rock salt from a shotgun. Mm. It's not fun. So Johnny is responsible for the crop circle phenomenon. I'm not going to deny or admit of that. Of course, so, yes. But, um, anyway, so we're, we're going to do in a minute some comic book trivia. But before we do that, let's go ahead and talk about what I wanted to talk about this morning. One of the big parts of the Saturday morning of our youth was obviously cartoons, comic books. I love comic books. I love cartoons. 
But when I was a kid, after the cartoons, after the pro wrestling, after um, after uh, Soul Train or American Bandstand, Channel 43, WUAB in Cleveland, Ohio, was hosted by Marty Sullivan, super host, and we watched Godzilla movies. Noon came and I would sit down and watch Godzilla movies until mom kicked me out of the house and made us go play outside. That's another thing kids don't understand today, right? Like, I saw this TikToker says, you know, when, you, when Gen X says you guys drank out of the hose, were sinks not an option? And the answer is no, no. because we weren't allowed in the house. We drank out of the creek. Yeah, yeah. You, mom, mom would kick us out of the house until the street lights came yeah. on at night and never asked us where we were, what we were <laughs> we doing. We were feral. It's yeah, like, I know. You fended for yourself, and sometimes you lost the, the weakest of the party. Yeah. 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 That's absolutely you the track, truth. You track five, ten miles, and nobody even know where the hell you yeah. were. Yeah. Come back before ten. Yeah, yeah. Your, mom, your mom thinks you're riding your bikes for ten hours just around the block. Line no, you traveled to the next two towns over. Uh, yeah, you back. built a tree fort. You 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 hopped on a box car on a train, and you know hiked two mountains over. Back in I grew up in southern West Virginia, so it's you. We literally hiked two mountains over. Went to this old abandoned mine. Went down into the mine. Came out on the other side of a mountain. It's like yeah, we should not have made it out of a few of those places. Yeah, yeah. Like you got shafted. Yeah. <laughs> oh God, that's oh, bad. Geez, that's horrible. Anyway, so Godzilla movies were a big part of my youth. Anybody else? Anybody yeah. else? No, Godzilla no. fans? Uh, monster movies in general. Uh, uh, yeah, uh, uh, Godzilla sometimes, but you know, for, for me, the the biggest uh, or the kaiju that I liked was the giant bugs. Okay. Uh, them. Yeah. Uh, tarantula. Though I, I love the giant bug movies. So them. Um, I remember them. Um, they were rather nasty. Um, they, those were the ants, right? Yeah. yeah, the giant ants. Yeah, yeah. I remember that movie. I think I've only seen it once, though, when I was a kid. But it got yeah. weird because there was almost a love story between the the heroine and the the one ant at one point, wasn't it? Or am I thinking of a different movie? I think you watched the Rule Thirty Four version of that movie. <laughs> I, I don't remember that part. So what what about you, Hillbilly? What were you into monster movies or just Godzilla in particular or well, in general? The monster movies in general for sure. Um I love the older stuff cuz you know we got all those reruns. Uh you know the the Gila monster from outer space and uh -huh. all that kind of stuff. Um always loved the King Kong Godzilla flicks, mm -hmm. you know Mecha Godzilla, Mothra, yeah. Yeah. you know bring all those in. Um Ultraman is the series. Ultraman, uh, yeah, with, yeah, yeah. That, that was always great. So yeah. every day after school, I never fight, could stand Power monsters. Rangers. Neither but could all, I. But all the old school stuff, I loved it. Well, yeah. so okay, so let, let's talk about that because I, I don't, I'm not a Power Rangers fan either. And obviously, on this show, our our regular viewers, our regular listeners know that because we've talked about it a couple of times. Because you're old. Well, but <laughs> when when Power Rangers came out, I was a freshman in college. Okay, and on paper, that that show should have been my jam. Yeah, I was so excited for its debut because well, it was it, it it was giant robots, giant monsters. They they, could, they, they took all, yeah. they took all this stuff from the monster movies that we grew up with: Godzilla, uh, you know, King Kong, all those Ultraman, all of it. They took that and troped it. It made it childish. It well, that, that's it, what it was. So, you know, like, like that was it, the, the, the Rita. Her outfit, her character in general was just like, what the hell are you? You're not, you're not a bad guy no, anybody cares about. You're this weird thing that they've made into a bad guy. Although one of the favorite cosplays I've seen is from Power Rangers. A guy had his face white and a little platform with tiny Power Rangers figures. Oh, that's looking fantastic. Up at him. That oh, was that's, really that's kind of cool. Well, so on paper, I should have loved Power Rangers, but then I watched it, and I was so disappointed, and, and it was not at all what I had hoped it to be. And, you know, one of my regular co-hosts said, but, but Johnny, you love Godzilla movies. It's mm -hmm. the same thing, guys in rubber suits, and, and I said, yes, but here's the difference. Those monster movies, they were serious. Mm -hmm. they, exactly. They, they weren't there to entertain children. They weren't there to be goofy. They were actually serious. 
And yes, the effects are all practical. And yes, you can tell that it's a guy in a suit, but you didn't care because the story was serious and it was serious material. And the artistry and the craftsmanship in those movies made you believe yeah. Godzilla was a real monster. And, and that tie together between the monster and the live action stuff with the people. Yeah. It was just like, yeah. that, that's beautiful. Yeah, and they go a, back and forth. And you, there's an actual the story. They were just them standing yeah. there and, oh my God, there's Godzilla. You know, it just, it was beautiful. So I've gotten into watching those movies again, mm -hmm. um, going back and revisiting them. I never really stopped, but I've been like hyper focused on it. And um, I appreciate your uh, recommendation of Skull Island. I've watched oh, the first yes. couple episodes. It's very good. Yeah, what a great, great animated series mm -hmm. on Netflix. Um, but uh, so I've been going back and watching them on on Tubi and Pluto. And uh, my wife comes in and she's like. Where do you find these movies? And I'm like... They find Johnny. Yes, this is my childhood. <laughs> but can you believe this? I, I admitted this on social media. I don't know that I've ever admitted this on air until today. Oh, we're in for it. Um, I had never seen a Gamera movie. Really? And and I thought I had because I thought the, the Godzilla character of Angiris was Gamera. And I was calling Angiris Gamera <laughs> for 40 years. But then I did finally watch Gamera, Defender of the Universe. What a fantastic movie. <laughs> oh my God, it was so good. So are you guys Godzilla fans? Yes, you too. You're, you're the youngest He's calling in the you room. Out. Yeah, you can't count uh, that one. Yeah. See, okay. That, you get that does, that's not Godzilla. That was an abomination. Yeah. yeah. Well, okay, okay. So let's talk about that movie in particular. We're talking about the nineteen ninety eight Godzilla. Yeah. All right. I'm bailing. Hillbilly bail. has to go. <laughs> Thank Broderick, you. Broderick, I'm out of here. Good luck. He's on a tangent. Have fun. Yeah. Well, no, no, no. This is what we're here to talk about. So um nineteen ninety eight got the movie Godzilla with Matthew Broderick. Um it's actually a great monster movie. It's a horrible Godzilla movie. If, if they had called it something completely different, then nobody would have any complaints about it. Yeah. The best part of the movie was actually the trailer of Ben Stein giving a tour through a museum talking about the T-Rex being the, the largest predator and then this giant foot comes through the top of the museum and smashes it. it. I don't think it was in the movie, but as a trailer, it was amazing. Yeah, I don't remember that being mm. in the movie, but uh, yeah, I, I I loved I loved that movie. Um, but I would agree, it's a horrible Godzilla movie, but it's a great monster movie. Yeah. A similar, not quite kaiju, but I always loved the uh, the Harryhausen stop motion. You know, the dinosaurs, mm -hmm. uh, uh, Valley of the Guanches, uh, Seven Voyages of Sinbad, all of that kind of stuff. And uh, some of the monsters in there were occasionally big. So one of the purposes of this show is to help reintroduce, reintroduce our audience to things maybe you've never seen or never heard of or have forgotten about. So um, I'm looking at the people in our live audience. I know that you've seen uh, Jason and the Argonauts. Yeah. Um, Molly, have you seen Jason and the Argonauts? I know you guys never have. <laughs> you Clips, but you've... Okay, so Jason and the Argonauts argu arguably has the finest stop motion animation skeletons ever uh, created yeah. especially the skeletons yeah that has never been topped yeah and as a matter of fact i i saw a cgi team mm -hmm. they tried to recreate it with cgi and they couldn't yeah but so what they did instead is they took the original film and they they tweaked the animation rate they mm -hmm. and they just smoothed it out and it's barely noticeable that there's any difference yeah, actually uh uh, Harry has had to do the reverse of that when he it was the uh, a, a statue of something a cyclops maybe that the, the came to life uh, uh -huh, this giant yeah, thing that, that was uh, also in the same movie okay uh, but but it was too smooth he's just walking around so he took out like every fourth frame to make it look jerky like it was an animated statue oh wow you know, I never knew that he had to kind of dumb it down to make it look not as real and 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 the harpies in that movie hmm? was that a key 
It, it, I forget. It's been a while since I've seen it, but yeah, it was, it was a giant statue that came to life, and they had to uh, make it not look so real. <laughs> yeah. And the harpies in that were terrifying. If you've never seen Jason and the Argonauts, it's a masterpiece of filmmaking. It's really... And, you know, that goes to my point, too. A lot of these older Godzilla movies and a lot of these older uh, fantasy epic movies like Sinbad, uh, Jason and the Argonauts, um, they could be re-released today and remarketed mm -hmm. to the younger generation as a brand new movie. And I, I think they would be smash hits all over again. Yeah. Because so many studios today, they're like, well, we have to do a reboot or we have to do a modern reimagination because, yeah, that was great, but kids won't watch it because it's old. And I, my thing is, if it's quality yeah. and if it's marketed again and correctly, people will, will watch anything that's good. Yeah, nobody ever watches an old movie. I mean, you know, nobody's ever seen Wizard of Oz because that's from you know, 80 years ago. And <laughs> Still, in my opinion, still the finest movie ever made is Casablanca. Mm. That doesn't even have color. How could it be any I, good? I, I know, I know, I know, I know. So, talking about Godzilla, um, recently I rewatched my favorite Godzilla movie, Destroy All Monsters. And I'm watching it, and something occurred to me, that there are two heroes that are missing. So the plot of the story is, the Zalians, the, the aliens from Planet X, mm -hmm. this is the first time we meet them, they have come to Earth and they are using mind control devices to control all the monsters on Monster Island to attack major cities mm -hmm. to take over the world. And they've made that demand. If you don't cede your planet to us and become subservient to us, your monsters under our control are going to annihilate humanity. <clears throat> And so it's really not destroy all monsters. It's destroy all humans and figure out how to you know, stop the monster rampage, which they do. But oddly enough, there are two heroes missing from that story that I kept asking, where is King Caesar and where is Jet Jaguar? Do you guys know who I'm talking about? No. So Jet Jaguar was a, a character that was created by a 12-year-old fan in a contest that Toho had. Mm -hmm. And he was originally supposed to have his own movie. He's a, mm -hmm. a size-changing robot um, that acquires AI and he can change size and you know knows kung fu and, or not kung fu, karate and, and all that because kung fu is Chinese, karate is mm -hmm. Japanese. Um, anyway. Um, and he can fly, and he can actually communicate with all of the other monsters. He was supposed to have his own solo movie, and they, they get into making the movie, and the studio is like, mm, we might maybe need to have Godzilla in this too. So it became Godzilla versus Megalon. And basically Godzilla and Jet Jaguar team up against Megalon and Gigan. And, and it's a you know, tag team for the ages. And I loved it. It's it's one of my all time. It's probably my second favorite after Destroy All Monsters. So it was a kaiju infinity war. Kind of, yeah, yeah. And then there was another movie where Godzilla teamed up with King Caesar, who was this giant, um, almost dog-looking temple protector. But he was the protector of a specific family that guarded the temple. And um, super cool character as well. Um, like drawing from all of the Japanese mythology. But those two characters, the heroes of Japan, were absent from Destroy All Monsters. And I could never figure out why. And um, finally, a friend said, well, that's because... Kai in Kaiju Union Strike? Well, no, <laughs> no, that's funny. Well, because, because Destroy All Monsters is set in 1999. It wasn't made in 1999, it was made in 1976, but it's set in 1999. So from a chron chronology standpoint, mm -hmm. it's the, the latest film, right? But it turns out it wasn't. The, the movies with Jet Jaguar and King Caesar came after Destroy All Monsters. So they hadn't existed in the universe yet. And that's really sad because that would have made Destroy All Monsters that much better. And we do see them in Godzilla Final Wars. Did you ever see Final Wars? No. 
So Final Wars is basically um, destroy all monsters, redo. <laughs> um, the Zalians come, they, they control all of the monsters except Godzilla, and Godzilla, like, kills them all. Yeah. It okay, was cool. awesome. It was epic. I was uh, pleasantly surprised by the uh, King Kong versus Godzilla from, what, eight Legendary, years ago or yeah. whatever that was? Yeah. yeah. Great movie. Mm-hmm. And you guys did see that, yes? Yeah, the newest. Yeah, yeah. yeah Kong versus mm-hmm. Godzilla. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, it, yeah, it, you're right. Yeah, yes. Spoiler alert, it's, yeah. Spoiler alert, I mean, it's already been out for like a while now, so I feel like yeah. we can talk about it, but yeah. Yeah, no, Mechagodzilla yeah. is the uh, antagonist, and they, they uh, yeah. And and Kong and Godzilla have a big, you know, big slugfest until they realize, oh. Oh, your mother is named Mothra, too. Yeah, okay. yeah. We, we've got a common em- enemy, yeah. and uh, so, yeah, they, they team up against Mechagodzilla. Who is in in the legendary universe is made from the DNA and the skull of King Ghidorah, hmm. the three headed dragon. I do like uh, in this version that the King Kong is more of an ape man, uh, able to figure out you know, using tools, tools things yeah. like that. Yeah, yeah, very huge. And in Skull Island, they really play into okay, that. Okay, I, I haven't gotten to, to oh. Kong himself yet. Still giant. Well, that's, that's cool. I mean, I, I figure he's going to be there. He's he's on the, uh, the the poster of you know, click on this to watch the Skull Island stuff. You know? Well, so they use they use the Skull Island animated series. It takes place between, and it is an official part of the Legendary MonsterVerse. Camp. Okay, cool. It takes place between the Kong of Skull Island movie, mm-hmm. which took place like 1971, 72, mm-hmm. um, and between that and. Kong versus Godzilla, like '90s, is mm-hmm. where this takes place, and it it explains a lot of okay, cool. King Kong's relationship. And speaking of uh, '70s Kong, the the movie with uh, 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 Jessica Lange and uh, Grizzly Adams. Yeah, yeah, I'll, the, the those were practical effects. They made not an entire you know hundred foot tall uh, gorilla, uh, but. A, you know, a whole giant arm and uh, the face and all of that—that that was all practical effects with uh, robot parts inside making the face move. And, Astounding and you, stuff. You you remember um, that was actually 1980. Oh, I thought that was in like the late 70s. Okay. Yeah. I thought it was 80, yeah. where where he doesn't climb the Empire State Building, he climbs the World Trade Center. Yeah. And he stands because between the twin towers. The, the two yeah. rocks that he used to climb. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and it was a made for TV. Uh, it was okay. I didn't know so, that. Did you? I saw it on TV. Maybe that's why. Maybe I saw it on TV yeah, in 1980. Yeah, it might have come, Yeah, that's what it is. Mm-hmm. I'm putting all the pieces together now. Yeah, I think you know, Star Wars had come out. That's when people, oh look, we can actually uh, do things like this. And then Kong came out. I think like that next year. Wait, no, it wasn't it wasn't the guy who played Grizzly Adams. It was Chris Christopherson, wasn't it? Jessica Lange and Chris Chris. Thank you, Bridges. Yeah. He did have a beard. He did have yeah, the yeah. beard. He looked the like Grizzly Adams. Yeah. yeah. That's why in my head it's always been Grizzly Adams. <laughs> and and do you guys know what I'm talking about when I say Grizzly Adams? Yeah. Yeah. yeah? Okay. <laughs> What's that? No. No, uh, he was a uh, a guy that uh, uh, had to live in the mountains for years because well, I, he was accused of a thing. I forget exactly why forget, he had to like, yeah. hide from the world and but learn how to friend, do all of that. His yeah. best friend was a grizzly bear. He lived with a grizzly bear, mm-hmm. and he had this big, white, bushy beard. and He was just kind of the, the quintessential mountain man. Yeah. Anyway. Three, maybe? Three uh, or four? At least, yeah. yeah. I think maybe five or six or something. It seemed like it was on a long while. Yeah, they're, they're Googling it now. Grizzly yep. Adams. I've heard the name. It was, it was great. So, <laughs> any other thoughts about uh, Godzilla, kaiju movies, kaiju Saturdays, monster movies in general? What did you think about Pacific Rim? That was a blast. I loved it. Uh, took the whole thing and gave it a, a new spin. 
the the Jaegers, the the robots that are, are the the mechs uh, that the, yeah. the humans wear to be able to fight them. It has to take two people that have the the brain connection. Added lots to the plot. Yeah. Uh, I haven't seen number two. I heard number two is not really worth watching. But number two, yeah. or number one, I thought was great. It's it's worth watching. It's not as good as one, but it's worth watching. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I might check it out sometime yeah. then. Because be, And it's worth watching because of the villain. No, absolutely. Yeah. What a great job. He, amazing performance. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, uh, yeah. Love, I love Pacific Rim. I, I describe it as, um, like... That old blanket that you love just to wrap up in. <laughs> that that's how Pacific Rim feels yeah. to me. I love that movie. It's everything I ever wanted in a Godzilla versus Robotech mm-hmm. type movie. Um Awesome. Well, hey, we're gonna close out this uh this right. show. What? You forgot my Godzilla. Oh, wh- what about your Godzilla? Godzilla. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. Up from the depths. <laughs> 30 stories high, breathing fire, his head in the sky, Godzilla. Godzilla, everybody. Godzilla. Godzilla. And Godzuki. I grew up watching the uh, the King Kong cartoon, uh, which had come out in the, like, 66. Okay, yeah. I, I, after I watched Skull Island, a friend of mine said, but is it as good as the 1966? (laughs) And the answer is, much better. Yes. (laughs) But as a kid, it was great. Yeah. You know. Then one day a boy to young, you know, and look, King Kong has this little boy, and they're friends. They go and do these things together, you know. So, so the theme song like to that, my bodyguard, yeah, except a monster. Yes, and the theme song to that 1966 anime Godzilla or, or King Kong it was catchy. You think it was as I, a kid? I, it was catchy. Okay, so I just watched an episode of it last week. Uh, I haven't and, seen it since I was a kid, and I still remember how it goes mostly. Well, all it was that basically they wrote the show's description and then set that to music, mm-hmm. and and it's very obvious that there's no like song structure at all. It's just like this musical stream of consciousness. Mm-hmm. It's pretty funny, but. Hmm? Eh, maybe later. I don't want to hear me singing uh, Come to the Church Service tomorrow. (laughs) Yeah, absolutely. (laughs) All right, so we need two volunteers from the audience. Come on up. Come on up. No, no, um, um, Patrick, come on up. All right. So one of you is going to take my place. The other one is going to sit where uh, Hillbilly was. And we are going to have a... A fun, rousing game of comic book trivia with your quiz master, Dave Mattingly. Now, if you know the answer, you are going to reach over and ring the bell. Yeah. And the first one to three points wins. And what do they win? Absolutely nothing. Leftover popcorn. Yes. (laughs) Oh, Nice. <laughs> so take it away, Dave Mattingly. Two contestants enter, one contestant leaves. All right. Your first question, what are the name of Superman's adoptive parents? <laughs> uh, John and Martha Kent. There you go. One point. Awesome. Congratulations. Next question. Which supervillain is known for being the only one to break the Batman? Bane. Bane. There you go. I have my luchador mask in my bag there. What is... cheating. Sorry. What is Quicksilver's twin sister called? Wanda Maximoff? Yes, or the Scarlet Witch. Yep. What is the best-selling comic book of all time? I would not know this one. Superman. Uh, A specific issue. Yeah, Superman okay. and uh, Superman dies. Uh, Death of Superman. Death of uh, Superman. That is not that one. Uh, is it Amazing Fantasy? What was it? I don't know. Uh, number fifteen. Or, I'm sorry, I ran into, uh, for, no. uh, like That's a famous Spider-Man. one. Uh, First, amazing Fantasy number fifteen. Yeah. Uh, no, it is uh, X Men number one. Oh, oh really? by Jim Lee, specifically. Mm-hmm. What is Wolverine's real name? Logan. That is not his real name. 
Isn't it uh, James Howlett? James Howlett. Three it points. Three Look at that. Congratulations, <laughs> sir. <laughs> well done. And, and what is your Thank name? You. Uh, Aaron. Aaron, nice. congratulations. Yep. We actually do have a prize for you before you leave. Welcome so to the we, Hall of Nerddom. Yes. Awesome. You're among your own kind. Yes, I am. Excellent, As are you. Excellent. You can Sweet. go back to your seat. Thank you. Well, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, well, ladies and gentlemen, that concludes our show live here at Imaginarium. They gave us 90 minutes, but we really only needed uh, 45. But um, any last thoughts yeah. on this Saturday morning at Imaginarium, well, Dave? Breakfast is the most important podcast of the day. Dang you. That's so good. <laughs> He, he listen. He he gave us our other tagline. Uh, the the podcast is uh, back in the cereal box, one hundred percent non toxic, and the only podcast fortified with eight essential vitamins and minerals. Mm -hmm. And now, the most important podcast of the day. Breakfast yeah. is the most important podcast of the day. I love it. I love that. Love that. So uh, before we leave, our audience, you guys have any comments, questions, concerns? Prayer requests, that's tomorrow morning, Sunday service. Yeah. Anything? Uh, what are Anything? you doing later today? Later today at 2, I am hosting a Marvel versus DC panel. Mm -hmm. um, so, uh, you know, bring, bring it. We're going to lay, uh, lay down the smack, as it were. Mm -hmm. And um, we'll also be talking about um, some of the things that are upcoming between Marvel and DC. And... Um, We'll talk about some of the news um, as it pertains to the writers and actors' mm -hmm. strike and all of that fun stuff, too. You've been uh, watching Secret Invasion? I have. Mm -hmm. I have. Um, I, and you know what? So how many of you guys are watching Secret Invasion? So. Super spies and shapeshifters. Yes. Yeah. So, you know, I. Super shapeshifters as well. Yes. So I was not enthusiastic about this show. Mm -hmm. I, I'm not a Nick Fury fan. I'm not a Samuel L. Jackson fan. I think he's one of the most overrated actors of my generation. I just, I, I'm not a fan. Um, but it's, it's a Marvel property. And I am a Marvel shill. Okay? So if it has the name Marvel on it, I'm going to buy it. I'm going to watch it. I'm going to at least give it a chance. This thing sucked me in. Mm hmm and uh, I'm I'm all in now. Here's here's the one thing. It's it's Marvel's version of Andor. It it is kind of it is kind of it it is actually giving um, giving fans what Agents of Shield promised, but didn't quite deliver on. Yeah, I was a huge fan of Agents of Shield. I was too. I, I just watched the whole series again about a month ago. I love Agents yeah. of Shield, but but you know what I'm talking about. There was this fan expectation for Agents of Shield. That didn't quite match reality. I just figured any excuse to see more Clark Gregg is all see, the only well, reason. For I'm me, <laughs> any excuse to see mo more Chloe Bennett. Well, of course. Um, and uh, I, here's my prediction. All right, and 99% of TikTok agrees with the prophet of pop culture. But I, are you really a prophet? <laughs> so the biblical standard for a prophet, just FYI, is you have to be correct 100% of the time. In pop culture, eh, 98 will we'll do. Um, and I am correct about 98% of the time. But this is my prediction. Um, and, and I think this is going to come true because um, the, the cast members have been so tight-lipped. And they've been like kind of di disproved theories. I think in Episode 5, the final scene of Episode 5... Of Only six invasion. total episodes. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so the penultimate episode, we will see characters from Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. as Fury calls in the cavalry. That would be very fun. Yeah. I would love to see that. And and if, if it follows the comic book story at all, they have to do that. Mm -hmm. His secret warriors. Yeah. Uh, with Quake, Yo-Yo, May, mm -hmm. and probably Mac. That would be my, that would be my bet. Now they could throw a swerve ball and, and bring back Coulson. Well, I mean, they brought him back eight times already. Yeah, <laughs> that's but, kind of his whole deal. Yeah. 
Yeah. So that's my prediction. We'll see next cool. uh, next Wednesday. Yeah. But if you guys aren't watching Secret Invasion, it's pretty good. It's really yeah. good. It's only six episodes total, so it's it's not a, a long investment. And you know what? The 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 special effects on it are fantastic. They are. Um, because it's mostly practical effects, mm -hmm. but um, you know the the shape shifting uh, visual effects are really good. It, it is well done. Yeah. 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 Disney, Disney Plus. Plus. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, it's fantastic. All right, guys. Well, that is it for back of the cereal box this morning. And, Hope uh, you guys had a good time. After yet. his Marvel vs. DC, I'll be uh, on a panel uh, discussing mental health. Oh, what time? Uh, three fifteen. Okay. So right after the Marvel DC two to three. All right, I will definitely be there for that. That that will be fantastic. So, thank you guys for watching. Thank you guys for being here in the audience. And um, until the next time, love you, mean it. We'll catch you on the back of the cereal box. Pokemon love cereal. Hi, I'm Crayley from Pokeballs by Crayley. You probably recognize me from appearing on various shows on the Cereal Box Network. For the month of July 2023, I will be running a very special collection. I am teaming up with the network to do a special breakfast-themed collection. So go to CrayleyVanessa.com. And featured right there on my store page is the Breakfast Collection, because Pokemon love breakfast. Most of them love it as much as Pikachu likes that ketchup bottle. You know what I'm talking about. So again, that's C-R-A-Y-L-E-V-A-N-E-S-T dot com. Or you can hit the link in the description wherever you're finding this video.